All right, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install a simple Digitrax DH165KO into this Kato C44-9W locomotive, painted Union Pacific livery. All right. This locomotive recently had, uh, I don't have a DH165AO decoder, which is also Digitrax brand, but it kind of pooped out. And I thought, you know what, this is ridiculous. So I went on ahead, looked online for another one. And I went to my local hobby shop recently, and they had one in stock, which is the KO, the H165 KO decoder. All right. Basically, I'm going to pull off the shell and show you how to install it. Let's get to it. Okay, so here's the basic Digitrax DH165 KO decoder. You got your manual on how to set it up. Then basic functions. All that other good stuff. And then warranty and repair. In the back, just a little uh, thing. Just advertisement for other products that they offer. Now, basic parts of the decoder that you have. Alright, this is made to fit Cotto, Stewart, Alice, and other HS scale locomotives. It's basically a mobile decoder board replacement. Just if you wanted to add sound as an SFX004 or 006 to the sound bug port, you'd have sound. Now the basic parts of a simple of every NMRA client decoder, you got your motor positive and negative leads. Alright. Then you've got your right front pair of truck leads and the right pair of truck leads. And then these pad, two pads in the middle of these truck leads, you've got the forward and reverse lights. Okay? Then on these pads, all these pads right here. All right, let me get another stick so I can. Okay, these are basically slapped on there and glued on there. This is basically the FOFR or FOF, FOF functions. Then these other pads represent other lighting functions that you may have on your decoder. So there's a positive and a positive, and then there's a positive on this. So these three are F1 through F3 functions, and I think these are F4, F5, or F6. So you can add more lighting outputs. Okay. Now let's get into installing this decoder in the locomotive. Okay, so here's the main insides of the locomotive. This is going to be the front side because of the two pitch lights you have here. I'll put this decoder down so I don't damage it. Okay. Now let's go on ahead and I'm going to try to begin the process. Now keep in mind I'm going to try my best to keep it on the camera so you guys can be able to see the process basically of how a decoder is generally installed and oh that noise in the background is just my layout I got my 2SD45s from Atherin running so this is one of my only Kata locomotives by the way I have four Atherns, a few Bachman, an old Atherin blue box and a uh, International Hobby Corporation and I've got more coming because Christmas is right around the corner I got more locomotives as gifts so, all right. Now, Kato Motors design where you have positive and negative wire pickups. Okay, this hole right here is a screw hole so that it holds the decoder, the board format. This one and this one holds the board in place. So we'll go on ahead and do that right now. After I look at the instructions on how to install this the right way. Okay, so the front of Loco 
believe is to the right. Yep, to the right. Go on ahead and lift up that ditch light cap. And this is going to be basically a simple wiring job. Take your screwdriver and basically then put the screw back in. Don't want to tighten it too tight because you don't want to damage the PC board. The screw is just there to uh, secure it in place. Loosen that up a bit. There we go. Because these are also, I call them drop-in decoders. These, well, yeah, this track is referred to as the mobile decoder circuit board replacement for these different locomotives. Okay. Oop, make sure I didn't drop that screw. All right. And let's make sure that I've got... Alright. Alright. The decoder is now in. Okay. The next step, well, I'll have to cut the video here because then I got to solder an extra wire to lead over to the motor lead two or one. And then I'll uh, show you guys the rest of the installation steps. Okay, now we're on the layout. I'm just going to turn on the power there for a quick second. And as you see, the decoder's in wired in. Again, because this is the DH165KO decoder, this has got the metal pins on it, on the track leads. And then yet, it's different to wire up the motor connections. As you see, it's obviously not, the mo like your motor tabs like a DH165AO. And I don't know what other code. That's the only decoder I know that uses the simple tabs, motor tabs right here. Instead, there are motor, sta motor staples. You can just curl up the wire. Basically, you don't have to solder it. Just make sure it's secure. Then you have power. And put it on the track. Okay. Now, coming over to my Zephyr Extra. I hit power. Power is turned on. Locomotive address 3. Keep in mind, I don't have any lights. Uh, program. Pull to forward, and she works. Yeah, train's getting away. Hold on a second. No, nope, don't want to go that way. Nice and smooth, too. I must say, Digitrax is really up their game. Okay. So now it's on back to the bench. Oh, I'll show you how to wire in one of the lights and the LEDs. Put the shell on, get it to work, run around my layout. Alright, so next up is the LEDs. Okay. Now, this is the front headlight of the locomotive. Now, this is going to my ditch lights. I just separated the plastic piece of the standard Kato locomotive from the factory as set that it was connected up to here uh, if I get it right up to here to this lens right here okay and you got wires coming up from the locomotive let me zoom this out okay white and blue go to the front but first before I do that I'm going to check it with these clips to make sure that I'll get the right light sides. You can take the ditch light casting out, but I'm going ahead and connect it. Make sure not to touch the PCP board itself, but. It 
it's going to short out and cause problems. Okay. Now that that's hooked up, bring the camera back. All right. Over here on my test track, get that solder iron wire out of the way. Okay. And now I'll go grab my throttle because my duplex wireless one is out of commission. Oh, and I first, then I have to uh, connect the track wires. Right here. If it'll snap in, I might need a diff a different pair of Alright, we'll angle it out this way. See if you can see it. All right, we'll grab this, and then we'll grab my handy dandy UT40 throttle. I gotta get a UP5 up here. Plug in the PR3, look on that light, go to address three, hit select, make sure we still got control. We're gonna grab the alligator clips, okay, and clip it. The front lights, like so. Alright, it's probably backwards, that's what I was trying to check on. See if uh, it was backwards in the wiring. Okay, it's all the way backwards. So, sorry, bear with me here. I just gotta. First time doing a K1AO installation. Hmm. Looks like it's not one to work. Okay. Testing it out now is out of the question. Uh, I'll be right back.
Okay, now that I'm back, I'll show you. Look at that. Light works. Everything is good to go. Because this is the forward headlight. Function is zero for on, off. And then if I turn it on, flip it to reverse, it will go to the reverse light, but I still have yet to complete that. All right. After I'll get the two next lights in, put it together, do a couple of test loops, and then I'll videotape uh, some run buys of the locomotive pulling my uh, coal train. Hope this video has been helpful to you on how to install a basic DH165KO decoder. Again, a DH165, any series of those decoders. They have all the similar concepts because they're basically designed for drop-ins like Kato, Ather, and Stewart, and other kind of locomotives that have a circuit board design. But for this example, I'm obviously using a Kato C44-9W Unipacific Livery. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you on the next video.